What's going on, you wild ape enthusiasts out there? Your two favorite simians are back tonight, and we're here to talk about the second installment in the newer Planet of the Apes franchise. We are talking about 2014's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So that's right. We are talking about Matt Reeves' 2014 Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, the sequel to Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which we just talked about last week right here on the Cinefellas Review, the YouTube channel here. And we're back to review the second film here. And this one takes place 10 years after the events of Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, A simian flu has made its way through all of planet Earth. And the apes have seemingly taken over the planet. And they're in charge now, led by, of course, Caesar. Again, here played by Andy Serkis with the motion capture. And man, right off the bat, you can see the improvement in the CGI. They really polished it up for this one. And it just looks even more lifelike. That's what I noticed right away. This is just a huge green screen movie and done in such a beautiful way. I mean, just a visual effect, motion capture, the way they do that, Andy Circus, Of course, all the actors in this movie playing the other apes. But of course, front and center here, Caesar being the focal point and him being the leader of this huge group of apes and taking over, you know, in the woods of San Francisco. You see San Francisco is just in pieces after, you know, this virus, much like the pandemic we went through a few years ago. Um, you just see how San Francisco looks 10 years later and they're taking over and trying to keep it together as a big group. And uh, yeah, the visual effects are amazing. As you can see behind me, it's even looks even more, you know, better compared to 2011's movie. It just gets better and better with each film and it's so believable. It looks like a real ape. It really does. Yeah. It looks very realistic. All the apes in this film, just magnificent job by the SFX team. And this is Matt Reeves, you know, coming onto this franchise and really putting his stamp on it. A different film than Rise, too. A totally different film. This is the end of civilization, um, you know, in a post-apocalyptic movie in in a lot of regards. And the aesthetic of the buildings and everything reminded me a lot of The Last of Us. You know, the the green and everything uh, breaking down and the buildings being overgrown. Um, It has that look and it, it feels very much like that, too. So with the apes in control here, Eventually, they run into some humans. They didn't know anybody survived, but here we have a group of humans that they come across, led by Jason Clark as Malcolm. Um, it, the, the apes come across these humans, and right away, something goes wrong. Um, but they're the, kind of the two sides are hoping to work together at first and to be able to help each other. The humans are looking to basically uh, get the the uh, power plant going again so that they can have power and, you know, in their way, of course, to come across the apes, it leads to one of the apes, the bad ape, Koba, actually killing one of the humans. And it sets off the rest of the film, which is out and out battle between the apes and the humans. Yep. It's another humans versus apes, but more apes in this film. You know, Jason Clark comes in with his character. He's on the ape side, not the human side. And no, 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 they're fine. You know, don't kill them. Don't hurt them. They're fine. Mm -hmm. Of course, Koba, comes out the, the big bad villain in this movie kills one of the humans and of course kills more apes and he's just unstoppable and a psychopath i like that character a lot the villain it really set up a lot of tension in this film and what matt reeves is elevates the first movie to the next chapter it's a nice setup there's a lot of you know focus on the caesar and the rest of the crew here and that's what matt reeves takes with this film it's a lot of sign language body language that you know a lot of them can't talk but they become more intelligent over the you know the past 10 years. And he really dives into that as a director. You see how these characters grow, how they flourish in the woods. And it's just a beautiful looking movie. Caesar's starting his own family in this. So he's a lot more, has a lot more to live for and to survive for. And is the leader, he's really taking the stage as a leader here. And you see what happens when he uh, goes up against somebody that uh, doesn't have the same philosophy as him. And it leads to a 
a, you know, a conflict between him and Koba, played by Toby Cabell, who we remember from Servant over on Apple TV Plus playing Koba here. But you're right. Matt Reeves really dives into this film, the relationship between the apes. We're seeing them, how they've evolved, how they're, you know, even smarter than they were in the first one. They're learning to talk too. you know, some of them can actually talk. We have uh, obviously Caesar and, you know, they're they're evolving as uh, as the movie goes on. And when they're working with the humans, you know, peace is what they're seeking, what what Caesar's seeking, but after, uh, you know, what happens with Koba's character, he basically gets the humans and the apes to go to war together. And that leads to some really awesome scenes with the apes, you know, coming straight forward for where the humans are, are, uh, fortified and an, a really awesome scene where you see, you know, what happens if the apes have the firepower and are able to go against the humans. And that was a really cool scene, seeing all the apes charging, seeing the apes up on the tank, even, uh, you know, a really awesome action scene. I was just thinking, like, there's a bunch of apes that escaped from a local zoo, because that's how realistic they look in this movie. <laughs> and it's, like, terrifying at the same time, like your worst nightmare yeah. or something like this. And they're just like, some wild animals just going buck wild on humans and coming after us, lions and tigers, everybody coming at mm -hmm. us. So worst nightmare, but they really film it beautifully and realistic. And that's what I love about this movie that makes it so much better than the first one for the first one was, you know, a good looking movie, but this movie is just miles ahead of that, you know, just really elevates it. Matt Reeves, one of the best directors working in the business. One of our favorites that we talk about with Cinefellas all the time, love the Batman and his other films, but this is definitely one of his best films that I've seen thus far. And this is a movie you guys should definitely check out if you haven't seen it. Uh, so out of the two, this is my favorite. Great story, great ensemble here. And then we all forgot to bring up Gary Oldman is in this movie as well. One of our favorite English right, actors, yes. Sirius Black himself, is the leader of this group of humans that Jason Clark's with. Uh, but he's really fantastic in this role too. Good bad guy. And uh, yeah, really well done movie and a movie I would definitely pick up for on 4K for my home collection. So that being said, I'm going to give Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Came out in 2014, directed by Matt Reeves. I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five Caesar hair pieces. I agree with everything you said. This just ups the ante, improves upon the first one in almost every way. Matt Reeves coming to the franchise, putting his stamp on it, working with these fantastic actors. Gary Oldman portraying that character who's the villain, but isn't really all the way a villain. You know, you can sympathize with them because he had something happen to his family too. So it's looking at his character and Caesar's character because Caesar's family gets involved too. So it's kind of like, you know, you can sympathize with both sides in this movie. That's what it really gets you thinking and it draws you in. And it's just a testament to the story that they had for this and the directing by Matt Reeves and Andy Serkis portraying this character. It's, you know, he, he'll go down in history for playing Caesar. It's phenomenal what he's able to do with his eyes and in the motion capture, you know, it's spectacular. The CGI in this movie improved upon the first in almost every way. It still looks great, you know, 10 years later now that we're watching it. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm excited for you to watch the final installment too, and then see see what you think after watching War, the the final and, and the uh, trilogy here. So with that being said, I loved Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and I'm giving it a four and a half out of five Caesar hair pieces. So I want to hear from all you zoologists out there. What did you like about Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite film in the franchise? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to stay subscribe. Also check out these wild uncles on Facebook, X, and Instagram and our website, cinefells.com for the latest, greatest TV movie news and reviews. Thank you guys so much for checking out our YouTube channel and for watching our review of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. We're having a blast reviewing these movies before the new Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes comes back. And stay tuned for next week and we'll be back to cover the last of the trilogy, War for the Planet of the Apes. So until the next Cinefellas Movie Review, I'm Uncle Henry Hill. And I'm Uncle Logan Circus signing out until the next Movie Review. Cheers! Cheers.